Sveiki visi, mano vardas Paulius Ambrazevičius ir aš jau antrą kartą sveikinusi su jumis, kalbinu žalgirę žaidžiančius užsienio žaidėjus ir šiandieną džiaugiuosi galėdamas pristatyti jums žaidėją, kurio karjera yra tokia įspūdinga ir ypatinga, kad pū, kiek istorijų, tai ponios ir ponai, pasitikime Ogeni Onazi. Very nice to have you here. Uh, you're uh, only the second guest in this, uh, in this thing, uh, Ugovi Demon was the first. Yeah. So, uh, people can refer you with two different names. That's Ogeni, Edi, Onazi. Yeah. So, which, which one do you prefer? Like Ogeni or Edi, if I talk to you? Uh, for so many people who, I, I told them, if anyone which is comfortable for you, for me, Onazi, Ogeni, Edi, anyone is fine for me. So they are all my names. So if you call <laughs> yeah. me, I'm going to answer. And, and the interesting thing is that uh, we talked a bit before the, before the show and you said that Ogeni is like the traditional uh, name. Traditional name. Yeah. And it's funny because Ogeni sounds a lot like Eugenius, which is like a Lithuanian name and also Eugene or Yevgeny, like Russian name. So it's a kind of interesting coincidence. coincidence. Yeah, yeah. And I have uh, I have an uncle named Eugenius. So wow. that's also. But I think, yeah, I'm going to refer to you as Eddie because that's the the easiest thing. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, uh, did you watch the first episode we did with Hugo Vidamon? Yes, I did. I did. So uh, we talked a bit uh, about coffee. <laughs> And how he hates coffee and you like coffee. What's what's the thing with you and coffee? Why are you... Do you drink it a lot? No. Coffee is just... Uh, sometimes, you know, you just feel like to take something, you know, just to get the mouth busy, you know, not mm -hmm. to just stay like that, uh, apart from drinking water. Just to take something a little way with taste, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, I take coffee. I don't... Normally, I don't take coffee, you know. Or maybe we are walking and then with a friend, you know, need to just take coffee, do something. <laughs> but I don't, it's not something really necessary for me to take, yeah. Ah, but is it any relation that you, like, spend quite a lot of time in Italy during your career? <laughs> and the, the thing that you like coffee, is it somehow related or did you start drinking before that? You know, funny enough, uh, when I was in Italy, I don't take a lot of coffee. It huh. was towards when I was living in Italy. Then some of my friends will come, oh, let's take, go take coffee. So that's tradition of going to take coffee when we, uh -huh. we stay for a very long time. We just want to walk a little bit just to uh, then I take coffee. So sometimes when I'm going for training too, maybe I, do, I didn't do breakfast. Mm -hmm. I just try to get the coffee to at least have something to take before training now. Because uh, I've seen on your social media that sometimes you just film of yourself having coffee like in, even in a... A gas station or yeah. places like that. Yeah, no, it's just something to just keep the the body and soul together, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, let's let's start at the very very beginning. Uh, you were born, uh, interesting enough, on Christmas Day <laughs> in 1992, and I actually found two different places. That uh, well, the one was on in on transfer market, and the one is on Wikipedia. Yeah. Where you born? One is uh, the Benue State, and uh, the other. Th Place was city of Jews, Jews. Jos. So which, which, uh, where, where were you born? I was born in Jos. I don't know. I checked that too, but I'm trying to speak to my agent so they can be uh -huh. able to correct that in Google. You know, I was born in Jos. Uh, I saw that too uh, a few days ago, and I said I was surprised. Uh, maybe because they think I'm from Benue, so maybe I will be born in Benue. Mm -hmm. So because because I think that's uh, that's. Uh, uh, Jos is in the Plateau State, yes, plateau and state. they used to be like the same state at yes. some point. Yeah, it's uh, they are all in the, let's say, Jos is in the north, while mm -hmm. Benue is in Middle Belt, but very close to Jos. Mm. It's not uh, it's not that far. I think uh, two, three hours drive, so ah, you okay. get to so Jos. It's so not that it's not, no, big. It's not, not far. So, uh, what what was your family when you uh, when you were born when you were growing up? Uh, was it a footballing family? Uh, what, like, did you have any I don't know uncles, parents, or someone did play football? Because I think uh, football in Nigeria is the most popular sport. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So was was it a footballing family? Unfortunately, no, because <laughs> my dad was a disciplinarian. He's somebody who he doesn't oh, wow. joke with uh, school. He was very strict. Very strict. And uh, funny enough, uh, I'm the least person in my family that uh, people thought were going to play football professionally because my elder brother is amazing mm -hmm. left foot player. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Thompson. Thompson. Yeah. Okay. And he's the one, the most talented. 
is a left footer. And then my elder brother, immediate elder brother, because we are four in my mm -hmm. family, I'm the last. Ah, okay. Yeah, so my immediate elder brother too is a very talented footballer. So, but then because of um, how my dad wants everybody to go to school and become, because he believes that people who go to school will become lawyers, become accountants, <laughs> become uh, doctors. So he wanted this to happen. So my brother, who was very, very talented, he had to concentrate on his school and uh, try to do what he needs to do. He was uh, then in Nigeria, you know, when you're in the secondary school, there are some positions they give you mm -hmm. in school that shows that you are you are intelligent person, like they give you post to take care of the other students. Ah, uh -huh. Yeah. So they all had all this post. Uh, my elder brother was he in fact in the post he was the head number one so the second one too he was also uh, among he was given a, sp a spot prefect too as well mm -hmm. so but then they went to school and did all they did I went to school too but I was very stubborn <laughs> I was very stubborn I don't joke with my football I just put it uh, at the back of my mind that yes I, I will go to school but I will still play football but anytime I play football, I will always have it at the back of my mind that when I go home, it's a big problem for me. So <laughs> I just know that I'll go to play football and go back home with a big problem. <laughs> so every time it's like that. And when my dad come across your football boots, maybe around the house or something, it's gone. He's going to put it on fire. Uh, so he, he would hide your football? No, he would burn them. Wow, yes, that's straight that's ahead. That's very strict. Yes, very strict. You burn them straight ahead, you know. So um, when I finished my school and then uh, there was a whole lot of story about this, but I just tried to cut it short. And um, I was playing football and I was trying to join the local league in Nigeria. When it gets to time for the league to start, they always make like a trial, mm -hmm. give opportunity for the young ones yeah. to come and play the talented one. They will take them. So I was going there for almost a month every morning, very early, 5 a.m. We work, wake up, we walk to the place. It was very far. And my dad knows about this, but he didn't say anything because he's just quiet to see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because then the school is finished, so I don't have anything to do. So it's an opportunity for me. So everybody knew me then. I was doing very well. They was thinking I was going to sign in that club. Um, everything happened. I don't know exactly what really happened. Unfortunately, I, was, I wasn't taken to sign. So, and the news went all over because Joss is a small city. Mm -hmm. Anything that happens, everybody knows about it. So, I think my dad must have had some conversation when people are saying, ah, this very good player, he went to this uh, trials and they didn't take him. It's unfortunate, we don't know what happened. So, when I came back home, he sat me down, my mom, and my brothers, he said, you see, I've been quiet for a very long time looking at this boy going for this game all the time. Now, what is the end result of it? <laughs> he was right. Yeah. At that point, yeah, he, at that he point, was right. Yeah. He said, what is the end product of this now? Every morning, you don't do anything at home. You go 5 a.m., you go to training, you come back, you don't do anything, you sleep. Next day, same routine, nobody said anything to you. I was giving you an opportunity mm -hmm. to see what is going to come out of this. Even me too, I was guilty. You know, <laughs> I was saying, oh God, why? How this disappointment? So he said to me, you better go and keep your books ready because now no excuse, you are going to school. <laughs> so uh, what, what are your brothers doing now? Did they like finish school and went to university, etc., etc. So yeah, they went to university. They, my brother Evan has his master's and a PhD too as well. And uh, uh, the other one, he's working with the bank. And mm -hmm. uh, the, this other one is working, I think, with the government, I think. And then the um, immediate elder brother, he's uh, done with school and he's, um, he read uh, architecture. And he's uh, very good and he's practicing and trying to do what he needs to do. So basically you're the only out of these four who has, has, doesn't have like this uh, serious career, <laughs> like serious <laughs> sciences. And yeah, stuff. so <laughs> basically, um, so my dad, basically he never watches football. Oh yeah? Never. 
Even when you play? No, like I'm just, before I started playing, he never watches ah, football. okay. So along the line, how everything went when I now went to the national team on the 17 to play in the World, uh, World Cup in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Before the World Cup, the list normally comes out for the 21 players or 23 players who are going to represent the country. So my uncle, who was a professor in the university that I'm supposed to go to, he <laughs> said, wow, this name is not two because my name is, my family's surname is very popular, ah, Onazi. Okay. And he said, this must be his uh, uh, brother's son. He called my dad and said, is your son uh, playing football in the national team? My dad said, no, it's impossible. <laughs> he said, call him and know where he is. Unfortunately, he tried to call me, but he couldn't get me. And then we had to play the first game in the national uh, stadium in Nigeria because it was hosted by Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. And that was the first time he watched football. He sat down and saw me on the TV. And then he said to himself, he needs to apologize to me because he, he, he almost tried to uh, ruin my career by <laughs> trying to uh, the, um, make me not to play football again, go to school and stuff like that. But then, with thank God. But you know, he had his, like, this worldview in which uh, like going to university and studying and working is, is the best way to do. So it's, it, it was kind of... Uh, difficult for him <laughs> yeah, to, to understand that there might be other careers. <laughs> of course, I understand. Uh, you know, football then, uh, uh, for himself, he didn't see football as something that is uh, really big mm -hmm. because he doesn't watch football. Something you don't understand, you, 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 might, condemn, you might condemn it. But if he had had uh, an idea about how football is, during their time, sports, sportsmen, they see them as maybe people who are useless. Mm -hmm. They don't have anything to do. They are not intelligent. They are not smart. They cannot read. They cannot write. So this is the only option they have to do sports. But sports now is different. Yeah. yeah. We have people who are who even have their masters too. They are doing. They are in sports. People who read a lot of things. They are doing sports. Sportsmen too are very very intelligent as well. So, well. Yeah. So uh, let's let's go a little bit back. Uh, you were born in 1992. Mm. Uh, so what was it like growing up in Nigeria in the 90s, knowing like that uh, uh, Nigerian football team was kind of kind of a successful uh, at that time? Like they played in 1994 World Cup, which I think you were a little bit too young to, yes, understand, yes. to, to remember or yeah. to watch. Mm. But they were played in 1998, etc. So what, what was it like? Was it uh, th did you have a dream playing for the national team when you were growing up, when you started? Playing football? Yeah, of course. I I played football and uh, I believe so much in God and mm -hmm. I always pray and I say to God, um, I honestly don't want to start my career in Nigeria. I don't know how it's going to be because in football uh, in Nigeria, you need to have a lot of connections for you to mm. travel out of the country. I don't know anyone. My uncles, they don't even want support in football. They want to go to school. So I don't know anyone to help me out. But I just believed in myself and I said, maybe my hard work and prayer, maybe by the grace of God, God will help me. Someone help her from somewhere will help me. So I believe so much in that. In fact, the man who took me to the national team was a coach. And I told him, I went to his team. He had a lot of players. Mm -hmm. Players, even the present captain of the Super Eagles now, Ahmed Musa, he's, mm -hmm. uh, he was there same time with me. He had a lot of players, and when I, come, when I came there, he told me, you are so talented. Tell me which team you want to play, like in the Nigerian League, because he was really connected. I said, to be honest, I would love to play in the Nigerian League, but my first target is to play this World Cup, on the 17 World Cup, the one that is coming up. Because if I don't play this one, my age will pass, and I cannot play mm -hmm. on the 17. He said, He's, he was so surprised. He said, wow, this is the first player that will tell me that he's not interested in playing in the Nigerian Premier League because then it's a whole lot of a big a platform and you get, of course, money, enough money and all that. He said he want to play in the national team. Wow. Wow. He said to me, he doesn't have the connection to go to the national team, but he can make a call across to the coach. Maybe the coach can invite you and see mm -hmm. you play. 
I said, that would be perfect because I believe in myself. So he called me and I went. That is how it happened. So, uh, but uh, you, you started playing football in Joe's, but then you moved to Lagos. Yes. To, to play for my people. That, that's the name of the club. Yeah, it happened this way. From just this same coach I told you about, uh -huh. when I went to the camp, then I met a friend who came from my people FC. His name is Sani Emmanuel. We played mm -hmm. in the World yeah, Cup yeah, together. I think, uh, I think he's still kind of a good friend of yours. Yes, as far yes, as I, yes. As far as yeah, we speak all the time. So when I met him at the, uh, on the 17th World Cup, he was very short, a lot of hair, and he's a striker. So mm -hmm. I was really surprised. I said, how can this be a striker? <laughs> so when we started training, he was scoring a lot of goals, very fast. Even the ball on the air, he could jump above people taller than him. I said, this is amazing. This guy is talented. So I, I like people who are talented. So I went close to him and I asked mm -hmm. him, hey, my friend, where did you come from? He said he came from my people FC in Lagos. My people FC, who is the president? He said is a, is a prophet, a prophet, a, a, a pastor mm -hmm. who owns it. And he's very popular in Nigeria by Prophet Tibi Joshua. I said, wow, I've been watching this man on the TV. So I told him, please, can you take me to the man? Because I want him to pray for me so I can be able to make this team because there's a whole lot of players in the camp and they need only 23. We are almost 200. Mm -hmm. So he said, okay. So he took me to uh, TB Joshua and the man of God prayed for me and he said, uh, you are going, he sees me that I'm going to be uh, someone who is going to raise the flag of my nation high. He's trying to pray for me. And he said he's going to support me. He's going to uh, be like a guardian for, for mm -hmm. me. So I had to join his team to, to achieve all this. So he prayed for us and everything. And then finally we made it to the Under-17 World Cup. How old were you at the time when you moved to Lagos to play for my people of C? Was you were like 16 or something? 15, 16. 15, 16. Yeah. Uh, was wasn't it hard to leave your parents' home and move quite 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 far away from? It's quite them? difficult, but you know, our parents. Uh, maybe uh, my mother. She's quite understanding. The child is trying to look for alternative uh, means of trying to. In Nigeria, it's not like here in Europe. You know. Uh, Nigeria, even from uh, 13, 14, children go to look for something to do, you know, to help the family. Mm -hmm. As far as you're not going to do, if your parents are really strict, you're not going to do some uh, um, fraudulent things, uh, all that, then okay. they will allow you, you know. But traveling, uh, they might send you and your brother to travel or they might send... Uh, when you travel, they will tell someone who is in that state to take care of you, you know. They don't just leave you like mm -hmm. that, you know. So my people FC, uh, the reason why my parents were not uh, bothered about it is because uh, the church is very big and everybody stays inside. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. go out. So we stay inside. It's well known uh, in the whole of Nigeria, uh, the Synagogue Church of Foundations. The football pitch is inside, the church is inside. There's a restaurant, there's laundry, everything is inside. You don't go So anywhere. you just live there and you train there, there and train, eat there eat and everything. socialize. Yes, there. everything is there. Uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah, uh, I think we can, well, the, the interesting thing, and you have mentioned it uh, already. So in 2009, you were playing in the uh, Under-17 World Cup, which was held in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, you played not that many, I think, on that, yes. on that tournament, mm -hmm. but you went all the way to the final. So yeah. what was it like to, to play in front of your fans and advance this far and lose only to Switzerland as far yeah. as well? It was, it, was a, it was quite a difficult uh, process for us to get to the World Cup. Uh -huh. uh, a whole lot of things happened. Uh, and uh, when we finally got to the World Cup, as a young uh, man, young uh, boy, 17, uh, 16, 17. For the first time, you're representing your country. In the whole Nigeria, is too many people. And you, almost 120 million people. Mm -hmm. And you are among 23 that's representing the country. First of all, that's, all eyes are on all you. All eyes on you. That mentality is already on your head. You said, oh my God, it's really a privilege for you to be among these people. 
apart from bringing the privilege, you will not disappoint this country. Your name, your family, your friends, everybody, the nation. So you already, you're under pressure. Already, at that young age. So I was among the first starting 11 to start against Germany. Mm -hmm. And they, they had a lot of great players. Yes, uh, Götze, I think, Götze, was there. Yeah, Götze was Ter there. Stegen. Yes, and uh, I, I actually have got <laughs> someone down, Mustafi, yeah. uh, Kevin Ball, and then there's, others. There's a whole lot of great players. So when we came out to warm up, the whole stadium was shouting already. How, how big was the stadium? Ah, I can't remember, but it's one of the biggest in Nigeria. Ah, so in like Abuja, it's tens of thousands of people. Yes, so many people. They were shouting, my legs were shaking like this. <laughs> I said, God, what is this? So we warmed up, we started playing. Unfortunately, on the first half, we were down with 2-0 or 3-0. 3-0. 3-0. Yeah. We got to the dressing room and the president of the country was in the stadium. Oh, wow. So he came to the dressing room and tried to speak with us. And he said, look, come on, guys. It's not yet over. Um, they scored you guys three in the first half, meaning you can still score three when you go back. Right? I'm, I'm behind you guys. We are here to support you. I'm going nowhere. Just show me that you guys can do it. That was a very big motivation for us. But so first time, it didn't add more pressure? No, the person, no, ah, it was, we are, we are already losing. So there's <laughs> okay. no pressure. You are losing. So the only thing you need to take that pressure, turn it to uh, energy, to fight back. We went back immediately. We scored 3-1, 3-2, 3-3. And we added more pressure on these guys. And match ended 3-3. Everybody in Nigeria was, in fact, when we got to the second half, after some minutes, Nigerian fans are not patient. They don't have patience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They started leaving the stadium. Yes. Okay. A lot were going. We were seeing them, they were going. When we scored, goals, some people shouted. And so many people who were outside, already outside, on top of the, the, the stadium, mm -hmm. about to go down, leave the stadium. Yeah. They waited. They stood there. <laughs> Let's see what's happening. Maybe. So. After some minutes again, we scored again. They started coming back. <laughs> and then when we scored the third one, even people who had already gone, they came back again. <laughs> so the stadium was full back. It was really a dramatic uh, experience. And then when we played treaty, they said they believe in us. If we can be able to come back for German, German team, 3-3, yeah, yeah, we believe team. in the team. And then the next game, I think we were playing against uh, Argentina. And mm -hmm. we won against Argentina 2-0. And that's how... Yeah, and went all the way to the final. All the way to the final. But yeah, but unfortunately lost. Lost, yeah, it was really painful. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what happened after that? Uh, where did you go? Or did you change teams? Or where, where did you play after the tournament? Was it like a good, uh, good uh, spotlight for you to, to be noticed or, or was it? Yeah, it, it was a good spotlight to be noticed. Uh, in fact, uh, the first game we played against Germany, I was actually out uh, after we equalized 3-3. Mm -hmm. I had muzu cramp. It was very ah, terrible mm -hmm. for me. And then I had to, I was substituted. And then I didn't play the next game. I came in. I was always coming in to play, you know, uh, substitute, like substitute. But it has given me a little platform. Not enough for me. Mm -hmm. I still needed uh, an opportunity to prove myself. So after the tournament, Myself and Sunny Emmanuel together, because this pastor was, uh, he told us that he's going yeah. to support us. Uh, I didn't tell you that before I went to the under 17, I traveled to Sweden. I played for six months in Sweden. Uh -huh. Then from Sweden, that was when the national team coach invited me and Sunny Emmanuel. Uh -huh. Actually, I have a question about Sweden because <laughs> I've heard the story about a frozen lake. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Can you tell us the story? Because oh. I, I kind of know it, but I want to tell you Yeah, <laughs> you know, in Sweden, when we got there, it was really cold, minus 21 or so, uh -huh. okay. 25 really or cold. so. So actually, it was my first time of seeing the snow. So oh. I don't understand what it is. Yeah, I was asking the guy who was tra traveling with us, I asked him, why is your country all everywhere is white? He was laughing. He couldn't. He don't. He didn't. He didn't want to tell me what it means, no. But I already read about snow, mm -hmm. but I didn't know this is how it looks like. So 
when we came down from the train, my first step was on the snow and it was ice. I said, oh, <laughs> this is it. Wow. I now start to prepare my mind. So where we were living as at that time, we need to walk uh, like uh, 10 minutes to the training ground. It's the shortcut to the training ground. Maybe you go this way to the training ground. But when you want to go by car, you go this way. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit longer. So for those three months that we were there, we were passing the back shortcuts to the training ground. I never knew we were passing on top of the lake <laughs> <laughs> to the training ground. So we go every time there and then summer started coming and then the snow began to go away and everything was beginning to come into normal. I discovered that they refused to pass this road to the training ground. Uh -huh. I said, why are we always taking the drive and go through the long... I don't want to go to the car, I just want to walk so to have some fresh air. Let's go behind. The guy was laughing. He said, you will not believe what's happening if I take <laughs> you back to that place. I said, what do you mean? Come on, let's go. He said, okay, tomorrow we work earlier because we cannot pass there. He said, I said, why? He said, you will see the reason. Uh -huh. So we woke up. When we wanted to go, we now got to that place and I saw it was a lake. I said, oh my <laughs> word. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is the place we pass. If I knew that this is a lake, I would never pass here. <laughs> I was really surprised. It was frozen totally. You can never know that it was a lake. And I said, wow, things are happening. Huh? So, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, uh, the, uh, the, the tour under 17 tournament ended. So what's, what's next for you and San Emmanuel? So this uh, pastor, he said he was not interested in... Um, making money, uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua. He does, he's not interested in uh, all these managers or making money or all that. He just wanted to take us to the right club in Europe so we can be able to um, start our career mm -hmm. as he has promised. Because he sponsored us, everything he paid by himself. He didn't want any money and all that. Um, Sani Emanuel was the world best player and the second highest goal scorer in the tournament. Yeah, so yeah. as at that time, he was really a hot kick. Every club wants to sign him. So meanwhile, myself, I needed to show myself a little bit. So we, we, we traveled to quite a number of clubs. We went to, I went to Chelsea with him. We went there, we went for tryouts. So, but basically, uh, Sunny was the, the hot property yes. that everyone wanted yes. and you just kind of tagged along. Yes. No, not really like tag along, but he, first of all, he traveled before me. Mm -hmm. He went to a Young Boys. In Switzerland, in Switzerland yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what happened. I think they offered a contract, or I don't. I can't remember the story about what happened. So he he he, doesn't, he didn't take the offer. He came back. Meanwhile, we had an invitation from Chelsea, so they said we should both come because I think after the tournament we stayed quite a number of months in Nigeria. We mm -hmm. waited, you know, offers are coming, so everybody's just taking the time. So time was going, you know. So these clubs, they cannot just sign you immediately. The tournament is over, so they really need to see you play, you know, to like see... To see an action. Yeah, and, an action and, physically, you know. Yeah. They know us, of course. They know we are good players, but they wanted to see. So we went to Chelsea for trials, and everything was okay. They said they were ready to sign uh, the both of us, mm -hmm. but we cannot be able to play in England because of the work permit. Oh yeah, yeah, that's... that's so the that they were explaining a lot of things, we will be signed, we will go alone for another country, maybe uh, Norway or something. The process was too much. So the prophet said, no, this is too complicated. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, we'll find, we'll give you an answer later. So we left, another agent took us to Tottenham Hotspur. Ah. Actually, I'm a kind of a low-key low Tottenham key supporter. Tottenham. Oh, really? I see. <laughs> <laughs> so I, wonder, oh, I have some questions about Tottenham later because oh. <laughs> Lazio played Tottenham. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Please, so please I continue. went to Tottenham. I was there. The coach at, as at that time was Harry Redknapp. Yeah. And he liked me so much. He wanted to keep me. Mm -hmm. He said he would do everything to keep me because he sees so much potential. But same process again. The same the work permit. Yeah, and work stuff. permit and all that. So. Uh, it was not possible. So we went to Panathinaikos. Mm -hmm. Stayed in Panathinaikos. We had uh, uh, trials. Everything was good. They were ready to keep us. I think they were having problems. I think they had two presidents or so they are having conflict. It's like the, the Greek Yeah. Thing. <laughs> so we were there. They told us to wait, kept us in the hotel for almost uh, 
two weeks. Mm -hmm. So we said we cannot keep on waiting. They need to solve their problem. If we want to sign, we sign. If we don't want, we leave. And then we went to also Switzerland, St. Gallens. Mm -hmm. Also uh, trained with them and all that. They were ready to keep us, um, I think, uh, because of agents or so many things. We, we don't understand. Anything they said to us, we just said, okay. And then the traveling was so much, too much. Go here, go here. Mm -hmm. go yeah, because you like England, yeah, Greece, Switzerland. Switzerland. Switzerland, too much travel. And then I said to them, the agent, I said, look, uh, I want to play football. All this is not, uh, I don't know your interest, what you are trying to gain or whatever. But if you believe and know that you want us to become something. Just allow us to sign in a club. Let's start from somewhere. It doesn't matter. I don't care about mm -hmm. the money. Money will come later. So finally, we now went to Lazio. When we went to Lazio, the sport director, Igli Tari, he said, I know these boys, but just to make things properly right, I just want to see them train, you know, not try us because mm -hmm. you already know us. So we trained. With the first team and everything he said okay we're ready to give contract so he said he wants to give contract for five years so the the professor for said, both of you yes uh -huh. the professor said no i cannot sign five years five years is too much is these are young boys you know mm -hmm. this is another problem for us to agree on the contract years we took it took a very long time again so we were there in italy just waiting and then finally we decided i think we took a contract of uh, three years or so three mm -hmm. and a half or something so that is how you I started my career. Ended up in Italy. So, but at first you st you played in the uh, young team, like the youth side in Primavera Championship. Yeah, I think Primavera. So. Yeah. Uh, what was it like? What was it like in playing in the uh, Lazio youth team? Because well, it's it's a different continent. I think it's a bit different playing styles, etc., etc. So how did it go? It wasn't easy for sure. First of all, the language barrier was. Mm -hmm. uh, really disturbing for us, although we had uh, a teacher who always come to give us some lessons, but communication was really difficult. But in football, it's not much. Yeah. Football is one language, so you understand. When you see, you do. And then when you're allowed to play, you do whatever you have in your brain, you know. So in the Primavera, we had a coach. I will never forget about him, Coach Bolini. He's very, very good. Mm -hmm. He's also a coach who likes tactics a lot. Thank God I was... Uh, I was uh, very uh, smart and very intelligent with all this tactical something. So I clicked immediately with him and everything was okay for me. Everything was good for me. And uh, in the Primavera, I was very good in the Primavera. I played all the games. I scored a lot of goals in Primavera. And um, Which position did you play? Did you still... I was playing like um, box to box. Ah, okay, because because uh, I thought it's kind of a it's it's a defensive midfielder that you. It, it was with. when I went to the first team uh -huh. of Lazio. Then I started playing as a, a defensive, uh, defensive midfielder. Okay, because it's not that position to score a lot of goals. So when yeah, you yeah. So um, uh -huh. I played there, and then I was not so long with the second team, and then I was promoted to the first team. I started training with the first team, and when I got my first cap. Uh, with the first team, then I extended my contract, improved more, improved contract, and uh, well, that is how. Uh, do you do you remember the first game and uh, the opponent of that game, and what did you substitute? Yes, of like? course. <laughs> so, so please tell tell us more about it. What was it like? Uh, what did you feel? Because you played, you was substituted on only during the injury time, I think. Yes. Yes. So what, what what was it like? What did it look like? Yeah, you know, uh, first of all, for you to be on the first team of Lazio, it's, uh, uh, it's a dream already. Yeah. So when I was called up to go with the team, I was really excited. I called the prophet who took us there. I said, oh, man of God, daddy, I'm called up to play, go with the first team. I don't know, even if I don't play, it's enough for me to go with the first team, you know. Yeah. The treatment, everything is different, you know. So he said, wow, God be with you. Just go do the things you need to do. Be humble, try and be correct, do everything you need to do, respect everybody and all that. I said, okay, sir. And then we went uh, with the team and uh, um, I think we were leading also, or draw or something. 
I can't really remember though. Two, two nil. It was two, the result two, was two nil. <laughs> two nil. Okay. So, and then uh, during the injury time, or so four minutes or three minutes to go, then I substituted uh, Lulic in Atlanta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I came in the game. I was so excited. Touched the ball, you know, passed the ball. I touched the ball. I think two, three times or four times. But I was fulfilled, you know. It was the first step for me, and I was really happy. And uh, we won the game, and then my journey started like that. And uh, but you know, the, the, there aren't that many uh, Nigerian players who played in the Serie A. So you were like following in the footsteps of uh, Taribo West, uh, Kanu, and Dobafemi Martins. Yeah. How how did it feel like? Because you were kind of an ambassador for for the Nigerian football in Italy. Not really. There's a Nigerian who was playing in Lazio too. And he's currently my manager right now. Ah. Yes, his name is Steven Makewa. Uh-huh. He's a striker and he was very good in uh, Lazio, scored a lot of goals. I met him there, it was almost the end of his uh, career then, but mm-hmm. I came in, so I met him. So uh, he was also doing very well there. And um, it was really good uh, to be a Nigerian who played in uh, Lazio. It was a uh, few Nigerians who played in Lazio. I think it's just the both of us, I think. Yeah. And so for me, it's a privilege. So uh, I'm, I'm, I, I couldn't not ask you about uh, this thing. How did the fans of Lazio met you? Because, well, we know they're, they have had some uh, racism issues before and after you played, etc. So. What uh, what was what were the fans like when you played for Lazio? <laughs> Funny enough, uh, Lazio fans they are part of the people who made me more stronger. You know, mm-hmm. I've never since I left Lazio, I've never had one uh, reason for racism. Okay. Yes, because even they use so many of my posters to pro, uh, to uh, campaign against racism. Mm-hmm. The Lazio fans, they are. Uh, they, they, they made me more stronger, as I said, and um, I've never had any uh, confrontation about uh, racism. And uh, everywhere I've played, I've always been the favorite of the fans. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So, uh, uh, in 2012, you made your debut for the senior team of Nigeria for the uh, Cup of Nations qualification. Uh, you won. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you remember your first game? Yeah, uh, in yes. the senior national team, yes, yes. it was against Liberia, and you won like six one. So six what? <laughs> what was it like? What was it like? Yeah, you know the the call up for the national team also was uh, something. Uh, it's a dream come true, mm-hmm. playing uh, for the senior national team. You know, uh, I was doing so well in Lazio as at that age. I was very young, and in Lazio we had a lot of big players, and for me to be playing. And those play, big players are on the bench. It was really uh, something you don't want any distraction, a bit mm-hmm. to take. Because when you leave that position, you can you might never go back to that position. So it was a opportunity that I held with my two hands. I never allowed it to slip off. When we had a lot of good players in the team, if you if you if you play you play bad, you don't you can't get yourself in the team again. And I played a whole lot of games in uh, Lazio. And uh, so the national team coach, uh, I think the way I was told, the secretary of the national team was with the national team coach. May he so rest in peace because he's dead now. Stephen Keshi. They were together and it was about time for them to call the national team list for players mm-hmm. to go. So it was like a week plus. So he was sitting with this secretary and he said, ah, can you turn on the TV? Today is Europa League uh, match and uh, let me see who, who which people are playing. Fortunately, it was Lazio Tottenham. Ah, okay. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> this is how they explained to me. So he was watching the game and he saw the lineup. He saw my name, Onasi. And they put the Nigerian flag. And he said to the secretary, huh, this boy, is it not a Nigerian? He said, yes, he's a Nigerian. He even played in under 17 mm-hmm. and under 20. He said, wow, oh, good, interesting game. So he was wanted to see. So when the game was going on, 
Immediately after the first half, he said, no, this guy must come to the national team. Yeah, because you played very well in that game, yeah. actually. And yeah. you held Tottenham to 0-0. Yes. The game it was an amazing game and it was really freezing. It was cold. <laughs> oh, my God. It was really cold. So he told the secretary, include this uh, boy in the list. So that is how I was called up in the national team. Uh, it was October 20, uh, 2012. Mm -hmm. And in January 2013, so it's like... Three months later, you were already playing in African Cup of Nations, yeah. which you won. Yes. <laughs> and you started, I think you started the first game, then you were on bench on the second, but then you played basically all, all of the tournament. So how was it like? You were only 19 years old? Yeah. No, no, 20, 21, almost 20, 20, 20, 20 years old. Yeah. So what was it like being this young player and to be very important in a team that wins continental championship? Yeah. Uh, as I told you, as at that time, it was really a uh, time that I never wanted any distraction, you know. Um, going to the national team, it's also the same mentality like being in Lazio team. In the national team, there's a whole lot of talented players. So when you have an opportunity, I don't allow it to slip mm -hmm. from me. So my head was always straight, focused, because I know the challenge that is ahead of me. And um, even as at that age that I was, the coach was giving me a lot of responsibilities. There was a game we played in the Nations uh, African Cup that we had a problem. Our right fullback had a red card, mm -hmm. so he cannot play the next game. So the coach called me to his room and told me, I want to give you a responsibility. I said, yes, sir, anything you want, sir. He said, today, you are taking a different position. To the right Play back? on the right back. Oh, wow. Wow. I said, oh, my God. Have you ever played right back before that? No. Okay. So he said, play the right back position. I believe in you and you can do it. I said, no problem. I played the right back position. And I think we drew the game. But the next game, I played on my normal position. And then uh, we went to the semifinals. We went to the quarterfinals, semifinals, and then we got to the finals. It was really amazing. As at that age, uh, I knew there's a lot for me to learn in the team. When we have, then we have uh, Mikel O'B in the, yeah, the yeah. team. I played together. We played so good together in the uh, African Cup, even up to the World Cup and all that. So uh, I learned a lot from him. He's from just to as well. Ah, okay. We, so we grew home, up together. We hometown know, hero. Yeah, <laughs> we know ourselves. Even the, the, the third guy who plays in the midfield, he's from just too. Mm -hmm. But the three of us, we, it's like we know ourselves and so we started playing together. It was really amazing. The city of Joss is a special city that is a whole lot of talented football players. In the national team, even the present captain now, Ahmed Musa, is uh -huh. from Joss. So we have a lot of players from there. So it was really good to connect with them. Mikel Obi was our role model then when we used to be in just when he signed for Chelsea. Yeah, you know? yeah, he played a lot and yeah. very successful. Yeah, successful so there. it was a privilege for me to even play with him in the national team because he's somebody who we see like this and then, you know, so it was good. So 2013 was also successful on club level because you won Coppa Italia, which yes. is also kind yeah. of a big thing. Very big. And you played uh, in... Uh, in uh, the in the national team and then the club well you were important part of that of both of those trophies yeah. so what was it like to win Coppa Italia uh, a very important memory that I cannot forget apart from winning the Coppa Italia it was a derby oh yeah, yeah. against Roma so it was two victories for for us in La Lazio uh, when we won that uh, cup it was uh, important I was on the pitch and um, we, f we fought for that game. We needed to win that game because it was uh, a do or die game for us mm -hmm. and the fans were really... And after the game, I was supposed to go to the national team, you know. When we won the cup, because of the so much joy and happiness, the fans locked us in the room. Nobody could <laughs> go out. I remember they need to sneak me out of the ceiling like this. <laughs> oh God! For me to go to the national team because I have a flight. To which make. which which floor was it? No, it was just a normal uh, ground floor. Ah, okay. But there's another way. I think it's a, it's a road to to get the um, to the to the roof, mm -hmm. the tank. 
So there's a, a ladder coming down. I had to pass through there because the whole fans, they were drunk. They were outside. They, they said, nobody's going anywhere. Let's <laughs> celebrate everybody. <laughs> so it was really, really funny. It was really funny. And then I had to leave um, right from there to the airport because I don't have time to go to the house. Mm -hmm. It was really big, big, big victory. And uh, uh, it's, it's something I cannot forget so soon. So uh, the next season, 2013-14, was uh, uh, personally very uh, successful for you because you played a lot of games in, uh, in uh, Serie A and also I think in Europa League as well. Yes. So uh, did you expect a call-up for the senior, senior national team in 2014 World Cup, which is the biggest football stage there is? Yes, of course, because I was already in, uh, uh, in the team, in the national team. And I was doing very well. I was a big member of the national team, even if I was very young. But uh, we just finished the African Cup and I was doing so well. So I was expected to be called up for the World Cup, but it's not like an automatic ticket mm -hmm. for me to go to the World yeah, Cup. Yeah. Because there are new people coming in and it does not mean because you won the African Cup, is you must play in the World Cup. There were so many guys who made a big role in the African Cup. They didn't make it to the World Cup. So it was the same mentality. I said it is not an automatic uh, guarantee for me to feel that I must play in the World Cup. So I fought my way and uh, tried to work hard to get to the World Cup. And this is this is very kind of a surreal moment for you because I very clearly remember watching Nigerian games on TV at my home and now I'm like talking to you, which is <laughs> very nice. So, yeah. uh, but you, uh, Nigeria started the tournament quite well. They advanced to the round of 16, and then in the round of 16, uh, you lost against Nigeria. Uh, sorry, against France. France. You, you are Nigeria, mm. and the worst thing of all happened on the 58th minute mm. when Blesma Tuidi. Uh, injured you. Mm. How wasn't that a red card? I think recently I posted on my Instagram and I said, if this was, if the, if we had the VAR, mm -hmm. I think Matthew D would have got the red card. It would have been a red card. And then it would have been a different story entirely. But we did very well from the start of the game. We held France to a zero, a goalless draw until the second half, mm -hmm. until when I was taken out. In fact, the whole Nigerian, Nigerian people, they, they were saying uh, they, uh, Matuidi did the tackle purposely mm -hmm. to take me out because <laughs> I was everywhere on the pitch and I did everything I could just as I always do. But then uh, I always respond to that. I said, everything is possible. I might even be on the pitch and they might score us even four or five. Yeah. I might be out and they might not score us. So everything can happen. But the tackle was really a terrible tackle because that made me uh, not to make a very big transfer because I was supposed to make a big transfer ah, after that. Okay. So because I was injured, so they were thinking it's a very bad injury or something. And I was out for a couple of months. Yeah, I couldn't play. And so uh, that happened. and. Uh, we lost the game and for me it's okay we 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 went to the next round there are so many people who couldn't get to the next round so for us it's a, a good achievement so uh you still had a couple of more seasons in lazio but i think you were playing less than you were previously so what what was different in the next two seasons uh we had uh, a change of coach in lazio um, I think uh, when I was playing so much was um, Vlad Petkovic, mm -hmm. who was there, a Switzerland coach. And so he was sacked and then came in an old coach, I think he's Rea or so. And uh, this coach, it's a different mentality. Mm -hmm. He loves uh, much older players, you know, players who he, he worked with before. And so just his, it is his choice. Yeah, well, he kind of needed different players or different styles. Yeah, or something different like style. That. Or he, he worked with some older players before. So I think maybe just to like show them respect or something. So he plays them. 
And I, I do come in sometimes, you know, come in to play and all that. So we were not doing so well and he was sacked too. Another coach came in, uh, Pioli, the present mm -hmm. AC Milan coach. That this uh, coach uh, basically, uh, I don't know, for no reason. I was doing well, training good, everything. And I was not playing, basically. So yeah, I even had to confront him and ask him, uh, what, what is the reason? Uh, he said uh, there was no something uh, tangible for him to tell me is the reason why he's not playing. So I just knew basically he doesn't want to use me. So I was really frustrated by that. And uh, I told my agent, uh, it's time for me to leave because I cannot be like this. So that's how. And, and you left for Trabzonspor? Yes. Uh, were there any other offers that you might have considered at that time, like uh, some other uh, teams that you would uh, had offers from to go? Yeah, I was supposed to go to Werder Bremen in sorry? Germany. Werder Bremen. Ah, Bremen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, why, why did why did I you think go there? the 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 offer was not enough for for Lazio, mm -hmm. so they declined. Uh, and they took the Trabs and Sports offer. Yeah, I was supposed to go to Besiktas first. Mm -hmm. Besiktas came first before Trabzon. You know, the Turkish clubs, they are always like this. When they see the other club wants to sign a player, the other team will go behind and try to uh, take uh, the player and all that. So it was Besiktas who came, they were talking and Trabs and Sports later understood that I, was want to, I want to come to Besiktas and Trabzon went fast. The president flew all the way from Turkey and came to Rome to mm -hmm. conclude the deal and all that. So that's how it happened. So what what uh, what was it like to join Trabzon? Because I think uh, they have well, the Turkey is famous for its fans, mm. etc. So what was it like playing in Trabzon? Oh, Trabzon. I, I think you had quite a successful first year there. Yeah, especially for Trabzon sure. was a. Uh, was a fantastic club and the fans are really amazing. One of the most amazing fans I've ever played with. Uh, and um, Trabzon 2 is a very traditional club, very big club. The city is quite small, but they have a very big heart. Mm -hmm. the, the fans are really fanatic. They are crazy about their, their team. And uh, it was really good. My first game in Trabzon Sport, it's, it was, like magic, I scored two goals. The only two goals in the game. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I was playing as a defensive midfield player. Yeah. So I, it was really surprising. And the fans, after the game, they said, no, in the next game, the coach should put me as a striker. <laughs> What an introduction! Because, <laughs> and I think you you like raised the bar. I for raised the bar the so game. much for myself, <laughs> and I said, "No, one striker is not possible." So, man, but it was really good. I had a very good uh, uh, first season. In fact, all the time I was in Trabzon, it was really good for me. And um, uh, I had opportunity to go mm -hmm. for another transfer to England. To yes. which club? Yeah. Um, uh, what was it called again? Birmingham. Ah, oh, Birmingham uh, City? Yeah. The, the Birmingham club. City. Yeah, the club. Okay. Birmingham. Okay. Uh-huh, yeah. So, um, we had everything concluded. You know, I was already... I already said a goodbye to my teammates, mm -hmm. to the coach. I just want to take my bag and go to the airport. But for the rules in England, your country must be uh, under 50 in the FIFA ranking uh -huh. to be able to get the license, uh, the, 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 the work permit. Yeah. Yes. So Nigeria at that moment was 50. So the FIFA ranking has to come out in the next two days. Uh -huh. So I needed to wait so we can see the latest FIFA ranking before I could travel because everything was okay. Oh, wow. The transfer fee, everything, everything was okay. I already had, they already got me apartment, everything ready. <laughs> Unfortunately, the FIFA ranking came out. Nigeria was 51. <laughs> oh, that, that was so close. <laughs> oh my God, it was a big disappointment for me. And um, in fact, I came back to the training ground and uh, the coach told me, uh, you will need some days to clear off your mind, you know. So yes, so I was not playing. So I was just training and trying to get myself back. And when I was okay, I said, okay, I'm okay. So. I started playing back. 
the next one it's not going to be pleasant i think <laughs> so it's christmas eve 2018 uh, one day before your 26th birthday and you're playing uh rizaspor in turkish super league yeah it's kind of one of the memories i think that you like to forget because you were injured and the injury was quite severe so what what happened in that situation what happened there uh it was it was uh i don't even know how to explain but all thanks to god that i can still play football again you know yeah but i was having that same uh, pain on my achilles mm -hmm. right from the national team game we played in sessions because we played in astro tough uh, synthetic pitch mm -hmm. and the weather was very hot the black sand mm -hmm. uh, black rubber and the pitch was very hot so when you were playing the, this the hot rubber came into my uh, boots mm -hmm. and it stayed for a, a quite of time number of time there and so it gave me a little bone you know on my achilles mm -hmm. so when i came out of the game i saw it and i said maybe it's just nothing it's just a little pain so i didn't take it so serious so but i was feeling pains you know so i told the doctor so did some eyes everything but every time i train i'm still feeling pain so i told the doctor i don't want to say what happened with the doctor and all that but then i was um um i was forced to play games matches you know because we wanted to win the league in mm -hmm. traps and you were second at the time yes, you were yes at the second we were doing so well and there was uh, i was really important in the team i was playing every game they were forcing me to play and then i played and the last game there was a throw in i wanted to go for the throw in and i had a very big sound Oh, and I felt the tendon ruptures. Yes, I fell down and I was like, I looked at the referee and I said, how can someone kick me? And you cannot say anything. The referee said, nobody touched you. And I looked around, there was nobody. And the referee just shook his head like this and he said to the bench like this. I said, I was looking at the referee, are you crazy? You, are you the coach to change me or something? So I tried to stand up when I tried to move. Ah, it was not the same. Then I, I knew something was wrong. And uh, it was a 100% rupture. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we, the next day I had to go to Istanbul. There was a doctor who is specialized on this. And then I did the surgery. And then... What, uh, what was running through your head when you realized that uh, you're at least out for the season? Because these these uh, these injuries are very problematic, and basically, well, they say that uh, if if no one is around and you get injured, it's it, it should be a serious injury. It could be a serious injury. So, what was going through your head? What did you think about? Because it was it was uh, your first major injury in yes. football, as far as I as I read. Yes. So um, I was not really bothered uh -huh. about it because, of course. I was very, I was still young, mm -hmm. and so um, my thought was maximum I should be out for five, six months. And I have a very fast recovery rate from all the injuries that I've got. So I was not really bothered that much. After the surgery, I was positive, trying to, if you follow my stories, I was, mm -hmm. so I have so much energy, I was not sad, I was going even trying to walk out uh, with the injury, you know. But um, unfortunately, injury didn't go so well. The surgery didn't go so well. So I had to do another one, mm -hmm. same. So that was when I started getting bothered because uh, it came with a lot of reactions in my body and all that. I don't know, maybe because of the medicines mm -hmm. and uh, maybe stress or something. So those things uh, added to more uh, time for me to recover because with those kind of reactions I cannot train with those reactions. I need to yeah. clear those reactions and then start to train again. So after those things again that was what made my recovery uh, process a little bit longer. I stayed one year mm -hmm. without playing so 
that is a big uh, uh, setback for me. But then, this is uh, life. So yeah. So uh, you you left uh, Trabzonspor in January 2020, and you joined Denizli Spor, but and you only had a contract for six months. Yeah. As far as so, what what was it like to play there? You change you change the cities and hmm. you change the f- set of fans. So, <laughs> so what what happened? How, yeah, how was it like? you know, um, I was really uh, really bit uh, a little bit disappointed in uh, Trabzon. I've never mm-hmm. made this interview before, but okay, uh, it's an opportunity to express myself. I was a little bit disappointed with Trabzon because I was really uh, we had like a family. I did a lot for the club. Even I know the sacrifice I made for me to. Uh, for the club to get to the level where it is. I did everything I can and I was taking painkillers, drugs for me to be able to play because we wanted to achieve the aim for the club. And um, I was injured and I I was out and I came back. When I came back, I started playing. I haven't played uh, the last Europa League game uh, with uh, Trabzon in, uh, uh, in Switzerland, I think. Mm-hmm. I was coming back. I was already back, trying to start to play. So, um, because Trabzon wants to become champions, so maybe uh, the president, the president was my friend, he was a good friend. We always talk, you know, and maybe he wanted to get more players for them to win the league or something. So he asked me, uh, uh, you know, we want to win the league and we want to uh, because of the foreign players we have, we needed to get uh, some other players and all that. And uh, uh, maybe I need to leave or something and all that. I said, wow. If it's, this is the uh, position it takes, then it's fine. Because I was already coming back and I mm-hmm. was playing, but I was not yet 100%, you know. So even it was... They signed uh, the president asked me of Mikel Obi. It was Mikel who came to the team to, yeah, to, to, to replace Trapson. you, yeah. basically. And I said to him, Yes, he's a good player, you can sign him. <clears throat> and all that. I was really open to everything that happened, you know. And it took me back to a situation of there's a player now, there's a Turkish player, talented player who is in Trapson, is Abdul Kadir, Abdul Kadir uh, Umur. Mm-hmm. He's a young player. Uh, in Trabzon. His situation is even worse than mine. He's had three major surgeries. He's been out for a very long time. But he's still in the team. Mm -hmm. He's still there. But of course I understand he's a Turkish player and all that. But really, I was really disappointed by what uh, Trabzon did. But then, this is life, you know. So, one has to learn from all these kind of things, because uh, uh, I, in my life I cannot allow this such kind of a thing to happen to me again, because everybody has their own interests, so and everybody needs to protect himself. So for me, I say really, I was really disappointed. But then, I'm happy to be here and uh, life is good, and try to do something new. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you played for the Nizli Spor and it was 2020, so it's, we are getting closer and closer to, <laughs> to today. Mm. Uh, but then, uh, I've read that before the season started in 2020, like the uh, autumn, uh, spring yeah. type of season, you had, uh, you had an offer to play in Serie A. So, I've read that there was some some club that wanted to take you on, but yeah. somehow the, the deal fell apart. So, mm. we don't remember actually. Crotone. Crotone, yeah. Yes. So, so what, what happened there? Uh, it was a crazy situation. I was in Turkey and then I had a lot of offers, you know. Mm-hmm. But the Syria, I wanted to go back to Italy. So, this is my dream. Uh, I haven't had a very important offer too from Red Stars in Serbia. Uh-huh. So I decided to go to Crotone. We had the offers that they want to give to me and everything. So I said to my agent, they need to adjust this, this, that. They did. Everything was okay. Contract was sent to me. And then I went to uh, Crotone, went to do the medicals, everything was okay. Got to the office to sign the contract. And I saw a different thing entirely in the contract. 
Ah, because you, you, you know Italian, because yes. you spend a lot yeah. of time there. Of no, not even a matter of Italian. I can read Italian. No? It was, there are con the contract is in English and Italian. Uh -huh. So I read it, everything we uh, asked was not there. Different entirely. They were saying this left, right, center, this. I said to my manager, no, it's not possible. If we start this way with this, like mm -hmm. this, then we will not end well. So it's better to leave. So this is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And you went to, for a really short time, you played in Denmark, Denmark as well. Denmark, yeah. So what was it like for playing for Sonderiske? Yeah, uh, Sonderiske, I went to Denmark uh, basically just for like getting my fitness back, you know. Not really to uh, play for a very long time in the club, you know. It's an agreement we had with the... Mm -hmm. Sport director and the club, you know, try to uh, get my fitness back and all that. So I had fantastic time there, did my trainings, was a whole lot of work. I was there uh, four weeks without uh, training with the team. I had to do personal training just to get myself on the feet. And then uh, when I was okay, and I said, uh, I think it's okay for me, so I had to leave. Okay, so uh, and then the the most important part of this interview, because we're talking about <laughs> Jalgiris and Jalgiris channel. Uh, what what did you first think when you heard that uh, team named Jalgiris from Vilnius, Lithuania, is interested in you? So, what what did the process look like, and uh, were there any uh, competitors competitors for Jalgiris to take you on the, uh, their teams? Yeah, as as you know, always there's always offers to come up, and mm -hmm. um, there were offers for me to go to uh, uh, Kazakhstan, Russia, and all that. Mm -hmm. There was offers. So um, when my agents uh, told me about uh, Zalgiris, and uh, I had a teammate then in Lazio who was. Who is uh, from Lithuania? Uh, Stankevičius. Ah, uh, Stankevičius. Yes. Oh yeah, Maris Stankevičius. Yeah. yeah. So I said, "Wow, it will be nice to to come and uh, experience how it is over here. For sure, hundred percent. It's not all about the money, mm -hmm. because if you're talking about money, I would go for a better offer. Oh, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan <laughs> and all that. So I needed to be in Europe, and first of all, I needed to um, be in a team that. I know that are fighting for something, you know, people who are target, you know. I really want to win trophies, I really want to make good memories. And most importantly, when I got the call from the president, Vilma, of the club, mm -hmm. we spoke for almost two hours. Okay. Yeah, she told me everything, she explained to me how everything is. It's very rare for you to see, to speak to a president of a club, you know. and. Uh, who can explain the uh, objective of the team and how everybody is. Everybody is important in the team, not because you are coming here or all that, you know. She made everything clear to me, you know. Mm -hmm. And she's be sincere to me and how it is. I said, wow, this is good. And uh, I respect the privilege speaking to her as a president of the club and for sure, I want to come and fight for something, you know, it's an opportunity for me to, you know, get, uh, get myself on track again as well. So I said, okay, for this reason, because she called me, I will come. It's not because of anything. I will come and, uh, and I've heard about, I read a little bit about the history of the club, the fans and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, I want to be uh, uh, among this family. So I came and I said, I will do that. So, uh, what's what's the team like now for you? How do you feel in it? Because uh, uh, watching your uh, your social media stories, etc., mm -hmm. it looks like there's a like fun, competitive atmosphere inside of the team. Well, this this is what I get mm -hmm. being from outside. So, what's it like for you to to be in this team with these uh, with these guys? That you well, have? for me, everywhere I've played, I've always been the uh, center of the phone. Because uh -huh. without fun, you cannot enjoy your job. Because you stay at home with this difficult period we are with the pandemic and all yeah. that. You're at home, always home, 
you don't have anything to do, you think a lot and all that, and you go through the training, you don't have fun, then the life is going to be boring. So I always try to make something out of nothing, you know, so that everybody can be happy. So you can always be happy when you're coming to the training ground. You know you are coming to do something that will make you happy, you know. And uh, the guys in the team also, they are amazing, you know. I always make fun with uh, Joe. Uh, Joel, you know, mm -hmm. I try to yeah, give, so. make him a little bit nervous in the team, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like a little bit of, like yeah. kind of, some kind of a banter or yeah. something. Yeah, like so <laughs> we just try to do something, you know, to have fun, you know, and um, we have fantastic guys there, you know, the captain is an amazing guy, you know, and we have Tatko, then we have uh, Francis and the yeah, other. You, play, you played uh, table tennis with him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who's, who's the better player? Yeah, he's the better player. He's the better player? Yeah, but uh, I've not confirmed yet because we played when it was so windy. Uh huh. So, so the, the ball, yeah, the ball was. <laughs> was. Anyhow, so he's for sure he's more talented than me, but I needed to look for a professional. Uh, table tennis uh, court, so we can be able to clarify <laughs> very well so, but, because but, I'm also good in te te table tennis. And you're kind of a competitive guy. Yes. Yeah. So I well, hate, that's, I hate that's to lose. I, I hate to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to lose. So, so what's the what's the life like in Vilnius for you? Is it like well, you know, it's it's pandemic now, but uh, what do you do on your free time? Or how do you find it? Uh, the restaurants have opened. Do you have any uh, favorite places or something like that? Yeah, I'm not the guy that that works around so much you know I like my space mm -hmm. and uh, I only go out when it's necessary ah okay. yes like so, to this interview yes <laughs> thanks yeah you can you can <laughs> it's difficult for you to find me outside you know if I don't have any business to do outside it's not necessary but sometimes I could go for a straw or my friend could call me let's go for a straw yes but you can always find me outside like Somebody like me, when I go for shopping, I don't go for shopping to go and try the clothes or mm -hmm. try anything. I just go to buy and go home. <laughs> it's stressful for me to go and try. I don't like all those things. Yeah, so yeah. since I've been here, I've always, the only place you can find me is always in Francis' house. We go to play maybe a PES game, mm -hmm. uh, Pro Evolution Soccer. Or... You, you prefer PES over FIFA? Yes. Okay. I, Respect. I, <laughs> I only play FIFA one or two times in my life. Mm -hmm. I don't play it. So I have different uh, view about that. And uh, maybe we play Uno, uh, mm -hmm. just relax, talk and then go home. That's so you, but but you do you live here alone? In yes, Vilnius? I live so alone. Uh, don't you miss your like family or relatives or cousins? For or sure. Something? I miss my family. I wish they are here. Yeah, but uh, as, you, as we said, the pandemic is uh, yeah. a big problem uh, to move around and my kids are in school, so mm -hmm. it's difficult to leave now. So, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how uh, it goes. Where do they live? Uh, in Lagos. In Lagos, yeah, yes. so in Nigeria. Right? Yes. So it's quite <laughs> quite far away. Very <laughs> far. <laughs> so let's talk about the, the football here. So what, how's, uh, you've already played with Almost all teams, I think, from from the from A Liga. Yes, yes. Because you're playing uh, uh, second round. Second round, yeah. Mm -hmm. Against you start against the Nova. So, uh, what do you what do you think about uh, A Liga? What's the, what's the level of football like? What's the style of the teams like? What are the differences uh, between A Liga and other leagues that you played in? Mm, for sure, um, A Liga is not bad. Uh, even if I know the level is a little bit low, uh, I think uh, the organization is not okay, not really okay. Of course, I understand the capacity of the league uh, financially and all that, mm -hmm. but um, I know they will grow and they will get better. But when we talk about the players, I respect every player in Aliga because there's a whole lot of quality. I'm not a person that uh, People will say, ah, which country did you go to play football? Maybe Kazakhstan, India, or whatsoever. Everywhere now, football is really difficult, tough. You have talented players, but maybe you didn't see them. But if you play in the league, you will know that you're talented players. In my, our team, we have fantastic players. Other teams, fantastic players. People who are coming to play against Zalgiris, they want to die on the pitch because they're playing against Zalgiris. Yeah. <laughs> 
somebody like me on the pitch, everybody want to tackle me. They want to kick me every time, every time on the ground, you know. So that makes it difficult for you, you know. It's not a, like something you think you are playing in Lithuania, so you would take the ball on your head and your leg, maybe you would, <laughs> or your shoulder. It's not like that. It's very, very difficult. And other teams too, they have talented players too as well. Very, very good players. So the league is not as easy as you think. Maybe every game is three points, you score 20 goals and all that. It's not easy, you know. So we are pushing, battling, and um, we will get there. So what, what are the, uh, the goals for you and for you personally and for the team this year? So what did you expect to achieve uh, in this season? Well, one of my goals, I already lost it. That is the Super Cup. I uh -huh. would, I, I, it pain. I was so, it was so, so hurting to lose that uh, Super Cup. But then, um, it was a narrow lose, and uh, I think um, it's a mistake which we already, we already um, realized our mistake, and we will not allow that to slip off our fingers again. And um, we want to win everything. This is uh, my personal uh, mm -hmm. goal, and I think that is we're on the same page with everybody in the team. Okay, so uh, during your career so far, you played with or against a lot of great, amazing, huge players like uh, Miroslav Klose, uh, Sergei Milinkovic Savic uh, in Lazio, mm. Boraki Ilmaz, not to mention all the Nigerian guys. Mm. So, what uh, which or, or which one or which uh, many uh, people, players, uh, left a biggest impression on you? Uh, were there any players that you learned a lot out of this uh, or, or what? Uh, yeah, there's a whole lot of players I've played against uh, and uh, played with. But uh, Miroslav Klose, the German striker, he's one of the biggest influence in my life. And uh, just uh, looking at him and what what he does already has already changed a mentality in me. Uh, he's somebody who is professional to the core, and in fact, mm -hmm. everything he does, I always do it. Sometimes because I try to do it. For, for example, what? Okay, um, going to trainings. I can never be late on my trainings and going to meetings, appointments, not only trainings. When you have meetings with your fellow teammates or friends, when you say the time, I always try to be there before the time. And even before that, my father has always been like this too as well. He always keeps to time. When you say it's two, he's there, maybe one thirty, to wait until that time. So it made me to be more serious. He's somebody who has been a, a professional that you cannot see his things unkept. He's always arranging those things. And he gave me so many advices. Uh, when I was playing then, we were playing together, he tells me, as a midfield player, when you get the ball, the first thing you think of is your striker. If the striker is not ready, then you think about playing to the sides. Mm -hmm. And if there's no option, then you can go back. So this is the only mentality I have as a, as a player. So. I learned a lot from him and also when we are warming up on the team, he always stays number two or number three in the warm-up. And I always do that too as well. Mm -hmm. So you must always see me in the second or the third. And when going out, always be the last. So I just take <laughs> this from him. So this is uh, like a mentor. I think about him all the time, all the time, because he's very professional. So the very last question, uh, I think there should, there are some like young aspiring players watching this interview. So what would be your advice to, to those young kids who play football or want to play football or want to uh, go to big clubs abroad on Lithuania or whatever and play for their national team? What would be your advice to them? Well, there's a whole ad lot of advice to give to young players, but it depends on which one you take. Because if you talk about young players, everybody wants to advise them. And when you speak so much to them, you even get them more confused. Mm -hmm. So basically, what I just say to young players is dedication, hard work, discipline, humble. It's 
basically the keys for you to be able to be successful. If you're a young player that doesn't ask questions or a young player who doesn't learn from your mistakes, it's not possible for you to get to where you want to go to. Because they say in my country, they said, who, who asks questions, not a miss road. Meaning, who asks questions doesn't miss the road. Mm -hmm. You're going somewhere. Super, uh, let's say, to the mall. You got to a point, there's three roads. Instead of you to ask somebody who is there, please, where's the road to the mall? You decide to take this one. You'll find yourself in another country. <laughs> <laughs> so when you ask, they will show you the road. So this is a good opportunity for the young ones. When you ask questions, you will learn. And when you see things you don't understand, you try to express yourself, you know? Try to ask questions. When I was in Italy, uh, the young, young ones, we are always disciplined, you know? We, we, we do everything the right way. That's why so many times I meet Klose, I ask him questions. Uh, how did you do this? How did I do that? He always put me through, you know? After the training, I meet him. We stay too. He tells me, this is how, these are the kind of movements he needs to do. This is what, there's no how. Uh, learning does not end. You learn every day of your life. You, nobody knows everything. So for me, this is uh, the little advice I have for them, most importantly. And I believe so much in God. You put yourself in prayers and then everything will go out well. Thank you. That was a great ending to a great, <laughs> uh, great interview. So thank, thank you, you, Eddie. You're welcome.